And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is John Hanlon, a classic singer-songwriter with a great New Zealand music history. After 35 years away, he's back with a brand new album. We welcome John Hanlon as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. John Hanlon, welcome to The Beat Goes On. What a pleasure to have you back after all these years. Thank you. Back in New Zealand after 35 years, has a brand new album out, the first of three, and it's going to give us great pleasure to hear this brand new album that you're, uh, you're producing. Here we were 35 years ago, you were writing songs in your bedroom, totally unknown. What happened after that? I just got discovered. I mean, I say this all the time and it's true, because uh, most of what I say is true. Um, I, if you wrote what happened to me and how I got into recording, it wouldn't. Nobody would believe it. If you put it in a movie, B grade movie, yeah, nobody would believe it. And I, I simply was a guy who wrote songs as a hobby. It wasn't even. Uh, it wasn't even really a, a hobby. I had nursed no illusions to be on on stage. I never belonged to a band. I'd never. Um, I never even entered a talent contest. Right. I'd never done any of that. I just wrote songs. To base Basically. yourself. Yeah, yeah well, I mean. really. I mean, I, I wrote songs. I was driven out of musical ineptitude. I actually wanted to. I'd been in boarding school till I was 15, uh, an all-boys boarding school, and, and then I arrived back in New Zealand. I'd been gone to boarding school in West Australia. I arrived in New Zealand and would quite, you know, I saw girls, you know, and, and like most 15-year-old boys, they were... <laughs> what could I do to attract yeah, them? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> I was so inept musically that I couldn't learn to play these songs, one. Two, I was so pathologically shy, I couldn't even play in front of my family, right? So my, my mother, who, who's Chinese lady, she used to say, used to sit in his bedroom and jing a jang, which <laughs> leaves a lot to the imagination. And I don't actually remember when the process of songwriting began, but I think it, it, at some point I realized that if I played two chords, instead of just hearing two chords, I heard a melody. Where did that come from? Yeah. Don't know. If I, know, if I knew the answer to that, I'd put it in a can yeah. and sell it to everybody. Yeah. And somewhere with the process, and then as now, I would think of a tune and then the words would arrive. Well, one of the songs you wrote was Damn the Damn. Yes. Now yes. that was the one that did it, wasn't it? Yes, it was originally written as an ad, but it was a hit first yes. before it began. Yes, well, it was a great song. So just in case, just in case people aren't uh, too sure of that Damn the Damn, let's have a little, let's have a little listen. Okay. Damn the damn, cried the fantail As he flew into, as he flew into the sky To give power to the people All this beauty has to die Rainfall from above And splashes on the ground Still a great song, isn't it? Still a great song. That was a good one. So that's... That really catapulted you, didn't it, uh, to uh, start? Yeah, I was already, uh, well, yeah, that got me onto the hit parade, if you, you know, if, was, if that for one of a yeah. better, that I charted with that yeah. song. I already had quite a solid following by then. My first album had sold to my mother, uh, <laughs> and I'm being honest, you know, maybe a t and three of her friends. Mm. Damn the Damn got me in the national consciousness. Consciousness, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. That, that. But, uh, plus it got the fact that there's a songwriter, you mm. know, we have a songwriter. Mm. Hello, here's a songwriter. Mm. John, that was then. Wonderful days for both of us anyway. And um, John Hanlon, after 35 years in the advertising business in Australia, doing very well, thank you very much, decides that um, he's going to go on a mission, a quest for three brand new albums. Maybe more. Maybe more. So I think that uh, we should pause here, let somebody have a listen to the new album. Yep. Is that fine with you, John? Yep. And then we'll talk about it. Okay. Shadow on her face The silence of her Things I tried to say It was all too late The breaking of my heart The lie behind my smile Put on my bravest face anyway And yes, I cried And then I walked away 
Then I walked away And it was there and it was gone And it was real And it was everything And I knew I shouldn't love her But I couldn't stop my heart And it was right and it was wrong And it had everybody talking I knew it from the start Though it was really hard And I had to walk away That is great, Joe. That's terrific. Had to very walk wrong. away um, so But I decided to step I back in And the reasons away. for it are um, yeah, well, they're, both, they're both deep and shallow You know, first of all, I got In the same way that I grew tired of um, music when I was doing it, yeah. I grew tired of advertising. And um, I just was over it. One of the problems with um, owning a business or working for people is you then become responsible for them. You know, one day you've got four people working for you, next you've got 10, suddenly you've got 30 people working for you. And those people have families and mortgages. And you feel responsible for them. Well, more particularly when you're a creative director who really, and I'm a creative director who was a creative director who really, really hated giving people what they wanted instead of what they needed, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And many people, because well, it's a huge subtle difference mm -hmm. and there is an enormous amount mm -hmm. of, um, one of the great debates and, or dilemmas or conflicts in advertising is that you, mm -hmm. you constantly are dealing with people who, who insist you do things yes. that you aren't actually good for them. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. you know, and, but what they fail to understand, um, and, I, and I know this sounds like a grumpy old man thing, and I don't, but I may, I'm not unapologetic. They don't understand that, the, that you have to do the best you can for them because you know bloody well if what you do doesn't work, the they're going to fire you. Yes. Right? So why would you want to get fired for something they made you do? Yes, yes. Right? When you know right. that you can make it work for them. So the problem with me, I, I, the dilemma I had is I often couldn't say to somebody, look, take your account and good God bless. <laughs> because I had all these people working mm, for me. That's right. Right? Yes.